Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to have a fun conversation. We're going to be a little silly, be a little lewd, because it is after 9 o'clock. Uh, and uh, it is a 17 plus panel, so if there's any small humans in this room, you need to leave right now. If you brought your small human, you and your small human should go, because this is not a conversation for kids. Um, as you can see, that is a title. It's too long. I blame myself. <laughs> However, uh, I'm super excited because we're going to have a fun time, we're going to talk, and we're going to do a little housekeeping after everyone introduces themselves. Uh, almost all of the screenshots in here are mine because I'm a big nerd and I have a good machine. And yes, that is my tab with the emperor. <laughs> all right. So... Uh, I alluded a little bit on Twitter to having a secret panelist, but thanks to fans, we had to kind of change things up. But Sam is here with us. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to introduce ourselves, actually starting with Damien and going down the row, and I will introduce myself last before we kick off a bit of housekeeping. So Damien, who are you? Hi, everybody. I'm Damien Haas. I'm a voice actor, Twitch streamer. You may also know me from the YouTube channel Smosh. Um, right now, I'm Lyos and Delicious in Dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, we appreciate your enthusiasm, but chill. <laughs> <laughs> but I, f I still feel it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's me. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm D&D Jordan Lee, she, her, they pronouns. I'm an award-winning TTRPG content creator, Twitch streamer, and moderator. Uh, hi, my name is Noideen Likadir. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm also, I also go by Werewolf Feels on the interwebs. I'm a TTRPG designer, consultant, and writer. I also consult for other games, not just tabletop, and I'm also known for uh, the various award-winning podcasts and AP projects I'm in. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Camilla Panda. My pronouns are she, her. I am a content creator on Twitch and YouTube, and I also am an esports caster. Woo! Hi, everyone. I'm Samantha Bayard. I play Karlak in Baldur's Gate 3. You might have heard of me. <laughs> When I'm not in the world's biggest dating sim, I stream sometimes. I have a small show called It Takes a Village where we shine a spotlight on the people who actually make the games that we play. Um, and that's intermittently on Twitch and VODed on YouTube. That's important for me to say, apparently. That was me that decided to say that. Um, thank you for coming tonight. Tanya. Yes. <laughs> All right, so what is this panel about? I told you it was going to be spicy. <laughs> uh, shout out to Bloodweave Nation. <laughs> Look, you all thought I was going to be serious? I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, so that's actually the, the um, panel description that's in your app. I'm not going to read it at you. But also, you know, in talking about the origin characters, our own tabs, our own experiences, players, please note that we could discuss trauma, um, gaslighting and abuse as it pertains to the characters, or maybe ourselves. And if anyone starts crying, we'll just signal someone for tissue. Um, and again, if you get overwhelmed, you get triggered, if anything does bother you during this panel, we will, you will not hurt our feelings. Please take care of yourself first and foremost. Also, if you ain't finished the game by now, you're in trouble. There will be spoilers. There will be discussions. Look, you came to this panel. You should have thought about that before you came in the room. Um, so uh, it's not about. So we are not trying to be an hour of porn via Baldur's Gate. That's not what we're here for. We are going to have a serious conversation because the game does do a great job of talking about these issues and you know those of us as players and and Sam as being in the game talking about these very important things because not a lot of games tackle them in the way that Baldur's Gate has um, and we're gonna be frank we're gonna be blunt you know again this is an evening panel it is listed 17 plus just don't be fucking weird man <laughs> you know when we do the Q&A if you're weird I will tell you to sit down I'm not a mom, but my mother's voice will come out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, a bit of housekeeping. I know I've said it repeatedly, but people don't listen. Um, and it's going to run until 10. We are leaving at 10. We are not going to hang out because it's been a long day. Some of us have been up all day doing other stuff. Um, and when we get to Q&A, keep it on topic. Anyone who's seen me moderate a panel knows that I'm a very strict moderator. Uh, and I swear to God, if any of you get up here and start talking about fanfic, f headcanon, fandom, drama, I'm going to make you sit down. <laughs> because my soul left my body at MCM when people did that to the cast. Ooh. Oh, I'm not kidding. And then have a question. If you do not have a question, you will see the screenshot I have for that 
screen. Um, oh, it's, it's a fun screenshot. And again, be respectful of the panelists, be respectful of our time and your time for hanging out with us for an hour. And we're going to talk about love and Faerun. Uh That is my first tab, a dark urge. Uh, they, they had an interesting time. They, they got to know everyone except for Mazora very well, but we'll cover that in the sex, uh, <laughs> sex portion. All right, so um, love seems to be missing from a lot of the characters in the game. Um, getting to a place where they can love your tab or each other is, um, is a bit. You may not even see it until the epilogue. And then um, something I'm, I'm really interested in us talking about is love isn't a prerequisite to uh, getting it on much like in real life. So, who wants to start? Okay, these people wrote me novels when I asked about this panel, and now no one has a word to say. Uh, it, it really is interesting, like, because some of them come with pre-existing uh, pre romantic relationships, and many of them don't, right? And they're searching for something more, but all of them are united by the fact that they each have one defining relationship, often with an abusive figure, right? You've got Gale with Mistara, regardless of how Mistara appears in the rest of Faerun, for Gale, not a good figure. You have uh, uh, Karlak, and, uh, well, I'm, I'm not gonna say too much about Karlak. That's not my ex area of expertise. Please do. I'm right here. <laughs> Roll for initiative. I, I did this to myself. <laughs> you did. I did, I did. But um, each of them are searching for a new relationship to get past their defining one, which is a really interesting way to uh, have these characters exposed and available, both for like a romance, but also for a, a friendly relationship. All of these people are searching for relationships. That's one of the reasons why they can stick in our group of people and not stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, it is also worthwhile to mention that, yeah, some of them are not necessarily looking for a relationship right off the bat. They're just looking to be Lazelle and get down. Uh, That's it's cultural. Yeah, yep. it's cultural. <laughs> yep. I've played the game. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good combination of folks, right? You got all of these different backgrounds, but you do have the thing that unites them, and that is needing something to help them move past the relationships that have defined them previously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I'm gonna start calling on you all. <laughs> well, going off of what you just said, you know, there are specific things relating to sex and romance for these characters that sort of define how they interact with you in the game um, that you maybe don't even realize until later on down the road, much like in a real life relationship, be it romantic or otherwise. But you know, you take someone like Astarian playing on the vampire trope of like, oh, we're not kissing, but I wonder if I could bite you mm -hmm. tonight, which is mm -hmm. the same as what you would see in old cinema where you're like, oh, it's romantic, but kind of not, but why is this working for me? And it's... <laughs> You know, I, I'm a big, when I'm streaming, I'm a big fan of like not having backseat gaming, but I found myself actually having to check in with chat almost constantly being like, hey chat, I'm honestly asking, you know, is this character interested in mask presenting characters? Oh, anyone's down for anything. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, is this character going to get mad if I end up smooching someone else early on? Oh, they don't care at all. Got it, got it, got it. And so it was fascinating how open-ended everything was left regardless of what someone was bringing into that situation with them from the past. Um, because it's sort of, I thought, like an allegory for how you can influence someone's life, getting to know them as they are, regardless of who you are. Mm -hmm. Is this a fit? Is it not? Um, and I thought that was pretty darn neat. I, I agree. I think one of the most interesting things, too, about this game is also the fact that with not only the companions you're traveling with, your own tabs, you're finding your own sense of self through that whole experience. Um, and for me, I saw a little bit of the beta, but I hadn't actually played it, and I actually couldn't stand Astarian, and that has very much changed, and that's fine. Um, but, um, <laughs> but one of the things uh, that was really interesting to me was I'd actually, so I'm ace, I'm Demi, um, and for me at least, like romance wasn't necessarily something that I even considered doing in one of these games, and I've been bringing in my D&D &D character. Um, and kind of learning about how they would be interacting in this space. So on my very first playthrough, when I was going through it and we got to a certain part in Act 1, um, and, you know, oh, yeah, let's see if maybe we can have some fun time with Astarian. And his response of, oh, that would be funny, but it's not you, it's me. 
I have standards, uh, really threw me off. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I, I thought we were flirt. Oh, we're not flirt. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so, but it's been really interesting to kind of see through these explorations through stories. And I think for me, I also do a lot of stuff with tabletop. You're usually finding out about these characters as you're going and these different choices, how they can have massive ripple effects, who you're normally driving with in the camp versus who you may like, but you may not have the closest of kinships with. So it's been really interesting to see how no two playthroughs are exactly the same, no two characters and no two companions are, and how they interact with that as well. So I want to bounce off of that because I'm someone that when I play video games, get that romance stuff out of my video game. Now, please and thank you. I don't like romancing in video games. This is the first game I found myself, like, sitting there like, oh, this is how I explore like a character's backstory. And I was invested because it felt more natural. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just like forced like, hey, you wanna go to camp later? Like right now? <laughs> but instead it was more just like navigating the world with them and being like, oh, like this is an interesting choice. Let me click on this and see how that goes. And it just I don't know, it felt so much more natural than any other romance game I've tried. It's interesting you say that, because the first thing Karlak does is try to sleep with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, no, no. <laughs> Historically and canonically, the, she hasn't really had a relationship before. So this, I think with the whole apocalyptic scenario that they're in, with all the other stuff going on, that maybe she becomes a little bit more open to that. And I, what I love about the writing on this is, is the complexity of the characters. Not only have they got their own prejudices and their histories and uh, agency, and they'll change their minds as well, like real people. And I, I hope that when you were playing it, you realized that this wasn't, the, the, the relationships weren't gamified. It wasn't get the treasure, get the partner, get the scene and move on. It's, uh, there's something quite random about it, like chaotic, uh, uh, that replicates real life. And also, guys, you're in the camp together. Everyone can see and hear everything. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're supposed to be our leader. You've, you've fucked two people now. And we're like, <laughs> it's getting really awkward, especially, we share camp supplies. It's, I think we need an intervention, like. <laughs> Uh, this is why I appreciate Gail takes you to the skies. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> Hold on, but Gail, Gail can take you to the sky, or or he can conjure a bed for you in the forest. Either way, you know I'm happy. But I also think it. I also think it's important too because on one of my three playthroughs that I've been doing, actually off stream, um, decided to not romance anybody, and the fact that Withers is like, you do not have a bosom buddy. Why? <laughs> Look, Withers needs to go find some lotion <laughs> and mind his business, his little bone. Because if you do sleep with somebody, he's like, hey, hey, don't let those pleasures of the flesh distract you. And I'm like, look, I could die any day now, old man. Exactly. Leave me alone. Um, I have many thoughts, but I'm going to save mine for the more spicy parts of the panel. <laughs> Speaking of where it is. <laughs> that was quick. The bit you're waiting for. <laughs> Why Let's break this scene panel? down, shall we? <laughs> Someone please tell Dave Jones. <laughs> um, I did this because, so, quick silly story. I actually had a chance to go to Belgium for the pre-launch event. And I was in the second row. So if you look at that video, you will see me with my friend absolutely losing my shit. <laughs> uh, this was, I believe, Gail and Halson in that moment. So I just, I couldn't resist. And also I wanted to torment my friend who was tweeting this for me because she hates bears. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love you, Mandy. Um, and yes, so I did romance Minthara the old-fashioned way. So yes, I did what you think I did <laughs> as a starian. Mm. So Sam, hi. What that the first bullet point? What you thinking? Yeah, why does everyone want to bang you in camp? I got the answer to this because apparently some of you just didn't get that. Uh, we're, we're on borrowed time, guys. We're going to turn to a mindful air soon. It's the end of the world, so we're going to bang a lot. We're going to bang everything, everyone, and we're going to bang dirt. <laughs> you haven't discovered this. It's in the next DLC. Every time that I went in and they introduced a new character, I'd be like, can you romance the emperor? And they went, yeah. And I went, okay. <laughs> and then next time we went in, we're like, okay, well, we're in uh, Mick and Ed's are these uh, mushroom dudes, and, and if you get too close to the stuff, you'll hear it. Can you bang them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. Uh, we've got some sentient dirt. Can you bang it? Yes, Sam. Why do you keep asking this? 
<laughs> so it's a horny universe we're in, but you know, it's end times. Why not? Everyone's hot. I mean, there is something to be said about like being contained in a very small place with a few people, and it's the same reason why you know Mass Effect Two or Mass Effect Three. There's tons of, I shouldn't use the word bangable, bangable options there. Bangable <laughs> right? options. Because at the end of the day, when you're in close proximity, and if you're someone who's especially on the allo side of things, right, you're allosexual, you experience a lot of desire. Eventually, that's going to turn into, you know, we've gotten very close, I really like you, I'm super lonely, and very horny. So, I feel like that's the exact same situation in Baldur's Gate 3. That's the reason why everyone wants to, well, a lot of people mm -hmm. want to bang you, because, look, you, you're very pretty, and you're very smart, and you're very interesting, but also they're desperate. <laughs> wow. Why you got to come for Gail like that? Wow. <laughs> Ooh. We're all thinking of that. Gail wishes <laughs> someone would. <get>, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Thank you. Oh, please. Oh, go on. Uh, I was going to say, I also m mostly skew demisexual as well, but I, I found the storytelling aspect of this really roping me into it. And one thing that sort of surprised me was um, getting this out of the way. In my stream, we romanced Carlac. I say we, but like. <laughs> It was me. Dude, she's um, down for it. Like, <laughs> you know this. Was that? I said she's down for it. You know she's, this. She's down for it. But I found there something. There was something so interesting about it because, like, I'm also I don't generally care about romance in games if the end goal is just like you see a crazy scene and they actually you can see everything. Like, it's more about like the feeling of it, right? So mm -hmm. with Carlac specifically, there's this aspect of like. Oh, you can't do anything about it. You just sort of have to get to know each other for a while. And then midway through stream, I remember they did a patch where, like, they added in a forehead kiss. And I don't think that was in there at the beginning. Yeah. And I remember, like, actually on stream, like, having a little heart flutter and being like, that was a weird moment of feeling. <laughs> Is that new? Is that Everybody, that's new, right? And I'm like, wow, there's something for me, too? Like, I don't know. It just felt kind of fascinating that it wasn't just in that same box as we'd seen before in romance and games. I think I, one of the more appealing things about this game is the whole thing is about consent, but also seeing ourselves in a lot of these aspects of these characters. Um, for me, I deal a lot with chronic illness and chronic pain and the just the amount of representation but respect when it comes to those characters is really, really endearing in the storytelling. Um, and very similar to you. For me, I like to get to know someone's story. Um, again, could not stand a story when, and when I saw it from the beta, uh, just because it wasn't necessarily my vibe. But starting to get to know his story, Carlac's story, and the Shadow Hearts, Wills as well. Um, honestly, the whole group has been very fascinating and made it more interesting. But I love the whole time as you're going through these encounters, regardless of if it's Act 1 or Act 3, Consent is the top priority of safety and having that ability to just say, hey, you know what, I'm done, but like, let's still be really good friends or let's have a different conversation. And that's still being supportive for the most part with some of these characters um, and seeing how that goes and how not only the conversations around sex, but intimacy and love can really just transition easily between those. Mm. It's been really, really endearing when it comes to really just looking at the game as a whole. And that, for me, was very appealing. Do you have anything to come I, For me, at least when it came to the sex part, like I was excited just to see that there was options. Like It wasn't just like you're stuck in one relationship. You can explore other mm -hmm. means of relationships. Yeah. And as like someone who just does not comfortably talk about relationships, it was nice just to have that moment of being like, wait, I can, I could try and maybe learn something about myself or maybe someone else who is like playing the game can learn something about themselves in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where like, they can just kind of go explore and go, that's not for me. I discovered this is for me and I like this a lot and now it's part of me. And one thing I really like is, at least if you are trying to have a poly thing with Halson, Mm -hmm. And at least for me, because my first, my first run was a dark urge, and I had the conversation with Halston then went over to Astarian, because that was my primary romance, the first thing he said is, is this because, you know, we haven't in yeah. a while? And I have never seen that in a game, mm -hmm. the, where the characters are like, oh, is this like because we haven't been intimate? Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm not dissatisfied with you, just like, if you're cool with it and Halston's cool with it, hey, we're all down. 
And I was like, holy shit, they actually did this well. Yeah. Um, because I've not seen polyamory done well. And if you and if you don't go have that conversation, unlike what I did in my first run, I kind of lied to Gail. We're going to ignore that. Um, <laughs> I kind of omitted actually talking to Gail because I wanted to have my quartet. Um, I was a terrible person. Halson was great. But I just found that really interesting. And then, you know, the bear scene happened, so. Uh, just for my own satisfaction of the gentleman in the audience, could you put your hand up if you've been pegged by Karlak? Raise your nice. hands. Don't lie. It's a good ratio. Thank you. I'm making notes. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Yep. Um, any other thoughts before we move on to our next topic? Just really quickly about consent, I also want to applaud the game and the writers for there's like no less than three or four times during each intimate scene where you have the option to back off and be like, hey, yep. actually, let's yep. slow down or actually, I'm not into this at all. Like, and there's like four ways to say it. Like, speaking yes. of things I've never seen in a game, that's wild and good. I can't say how proud I was to be part of this for that reason. It's a really big deal for me, <laughs> really big deal. And you don't know when you're signing up for these things, they kind of don't even, you know, they don't even tell you there's sex, so you go, okay, well, it's yeah. good I'm down for that, because it yeah. could be a problem. <laughs> but, um, no, to find that it was being taken as seriously as it was, and the fact that it's not just backing off, I've had um, ace people come up to me and said they had a full-on satisfying relationship. It yes. wasn't a series of, oh, can we back off? Oh, that's okay. It was, it was consistent across mm -hmm. it, which is quite hard to do when you're you know, recording the way we were in trees. Sure, you know, it's imagine. not always coming together at the end, as it were. But um, yeah, that, 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 it's just, yeah, how lucky to work on something that's so responsible and people are getting so much out of. It's also really cool how the characters, the, the, the non-player characters, have the ability to consent too, right? They have understandable boundaries. I mean, yeah, Gail has a boundary against polyamory, but he's clear about that. He's also clear about if you take him to the, uh, the, 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 the sex dungeon with the twins, he's like, you know, this is really not my thing. And if you try to force him into it, he'll say, this is the most I can participate. You get a mirror image and I'm going to go, right? Uh, at the same time, when he's like, let's have, you know, in the sky, God sex, he also gives you the option <laughs> Not to do that if that's against your boundaries, right? <laughs> There's, all of these characters have such understandable levels of consent and boundaries mm. too, which gives the player character permission to say, wait, no, this is not okay with me either. And you know that it won't immediately just end the relationship in most cases. Do you mind if I just pick up on that, actually, just as you said that? Um, when we got to the Drow Twins, Carlac's not so keen. And I, I said before, um, you know, every time they introduce a new character, I'm like... <laughs> Do I have to romance? Right, and, and we got to the Drow Twins, and I went, is Carla like, going to fuck twins? Is this what we're doing? And they went, no. And I went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> She's got boundaries. <laughs> cool. She does. She actually has a boundary. It's so cool, yeah. I think, too, to add on to that as well, and talking about the companions and their boundaries, too, one of the lines that hit me the most was when, in Act 2, you're having a specific scene with Astarian, and he actually says, I don't really want you to think about me in terms of sex, and I don't think I want anyone to. Um, and that, I remember just, I was like, well, I feel seen. Because I mm -hmm. think so oftentimes with video games, especially if we're femme presenting, there's that over-sexualization that occurs in the games. And that pressure to do the romances or to be into those positions uh, in the game and, and deciding that because that is the sexier of the routes to take. Mm -hmm. And to really just be seen like that, I was like, oh, he gets me. Like, Astarian gets me as a character in that way. And I really loved that, the fact that you could choose to either hold hands in that scene or to just give a hug in that. It doesn't have to be anything else than that. So the manifestation of, of these conversations and the bonds that kind of form from that has really been intriguing. And I love that it's basically, I like to think of it a ladder leading it to something else really, really helpful to have those conversations. So you really went from enemies to deep connections trope, huh? <laughs> With a star. It's been a great night, all. Um. <laughs> all right, in the interest of time, we're going to move on. Sure. <laughs> um, so agency, this is a big one in the game because so many characters, I think almost every character except for Halson, and even depending on when you t what you talk to Halson about, you will find out he has lost agency at one point mm -hmm. in his many, many, many years. Um, Everyone has had a lack of agency in some way or another. Um, so I couldn't have Sam here not have Carleg on the, on the screen. Um, but that How did that get in there? <laughs> I have 25 gigs of screenshots. Yes. 
<laughs> um, but this scene is um, after you've gotten the second tune up to her heart. And, you know, it's like, I think I chose the, hey, we should really be serious about this. And I think this was the dialogue option I got. Um, Sam, do you want to start? Or do you want someone else to go? I'm let someone else talk. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pick on you, Camilla, because you haven't talked much. That's fair, but this is also the slide that I sent two articles to you about. <laughs> you, have, you have three and a half minutes. I'm going to time you. Okay. We'll start the timer now. Deviation or hesitation. <laughs> um, Buzz it off. Thank you. All right. So the one thing I wanted to bring up when it came to agency, and this is something I found myself ended up doing. Who here sat there and saw Astari and said, I can fix him? It's fine. You can be honest. Okay. I thought there was going to be more of you. That's fair. <laughs> Um, but having the sense of uh, like what is considered white knight syndrome where like you enter a relationship with the vulnerable person like Astarian or a good chunk of the other characters and you're hoping that like love will change them it you know is obviously not enough ever that's not the best option but i for my tab, I found myself going down the road of if it's going to make Astarian like happy, then yes. And then found myself at Cazador going, I'm just gonna let the game take the wheel and hope for the best. And then regretted the decision later because I realized I ended up kind of letting Astarian continue a cycle of trauma. So that kind of, um, I lost my train of thought, and I have notes. I was so excited. <laughs> but going back, going back to what we were going to talk about, which is the agency of it, um, giving the characters and allowing them to freely explore is... Man, I am really losing my, my marbles. I've had it's three okay. panels today. It's okay. <laughs> we will come back. We will come back. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk quickly about the Dark Urge because my first playthrough was a Dark Urge, Same. and I've and I've um, done. A, I'm on a second Dark Urge. Um, again, spoilers. You were warned. Um, if you choose to play a Dark Urge, you find out who your sire is, which is Ball, and you can all. But you don't have to take that road. You can be like, Nah, I'm not. I'm not with that. I'm not a murderer like that. And uh, Ball kind of kills you on the spot. <laughs> um, and I was just like, well, I guess the game's over. And it wasn't, you know, we get resurrected and everything else. But it was very interesting because depending on your relationship, ooh, I talk with my hands, I'm in trouble. Uh, depending on your relationship with, with Tav or the other origin characters, you have kind of a serious, very emotional conversation the next night you camp about mm -hmm. choices and agency and about how you don't have to live under Ball's joke. You don't have to be the, another murder lord. You don't have to be another Orin, basically. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, the tab we're playing has as much agency as we, whether we're using keyboard, and mouse, or controller, gives them. Because, you know, it, like you said, it's a way to explore things that you would never ordinarily do or figure some stuff out. While I may, you know, pretend and joke that I'm, I'm really mean or what have you, I do like playing a darker character because that is the agency to do the terrible things I cannot do in real life, or at least I would go to jail. So, um, so other thoughts? Um, so I also, uh, my first playthrough uh, was Dark Urge. Um, and for me at least, I talked about it a little bit earlier, for me it's been really great to see again representation of chronic pain and chronic illness. And for me, the dark urge is kind of journey translated, honestly, with the, what I deal with when I don't know when I'm gonna have a pain flare up, what, how it's gonna hit, how bad it's gonna be. Um, and going back to what Cypher was saying with that conversation, um, and then again, in my playthrough, it was with Astarian, but I have had it with others. The fact of saying, well, you must try, and that whole idea of letting it define you and hold you hostage with that kind of, yes, fall it in, and you can let it control your life, or you can fight against that and overcome that was honestly, I felt again in that moment very seen in that game. Uh, I wasn't streaming, but I did burst into tears just because it was very, we talk about that and oftentimes are associated when we are talking about either chronic pain or trauma. 
and oftentimes it's rooted in these video games as a way of uh, someone's being held back by those things that have been done or they're dealing with. And in a way, the transition that it became more of an empowering thing, that this is part of you, but it's not what defines you, was really endearing to me. Um, and honestly, it just, I haven't seen anything like that in other games, at least previously. Um, but it made it really interesting going forward with what choices and the ripple effects of that are. Whether that is a decision that you decided from the get-go in Act 1 or you decided Act 3 when you're changing everything up and making that final decision. Um, it's, just, it's been very intriguing to just see uh, all that play out. Yeah, I, um, I found it very interesting going through Carlac's storyline. Um, and if I'm ever going to step on your toes of something you wanted to say, like, please cut me right off. Um, but basically, I also saw that as a metaphor for like chronic illness, but also having a terminal disease. So it was a story of not just that, but what's it like to be a partner supporting someone mm -hmm. who has a terminal illness. Um, and, you know, probably I think the longest relationship I've had, um, she had chronic illness as well and I was in the position of like supporting and took a little bit of that caretaker role and so from that my own experience is like well I should probably back off and not be as much of a caretaker so anytime Carlac was like yeah I'm just gonna let this thing ride out I'm like you sure and she's like bet and I'm like okay great so it, I'm paraphrasing of course um, no that's pretty much it, it word for word yeah <laughs> thank you I am an impressionist voice actor it's I'm beautiful, so sorry thank, thank you, you. <laughs> um, appreciate you uh, but then by the end of the game I was sitting there like wow you know she's uh, Carlac is on the edge of the dock just like burning up and I'm like wow I can't believe this this is so sad and I'm tearing up I'm like I can't believe there's nothing I can do yeah, and my yeah. chat was like hey we don't want a backseat game but just say like don't and then you guys leave and I'm like oh for real <laughs> and so it once again showed like in my own journey as a person I'm like oh I the pendulum has swung too far the other way when does supporting someone become too much and when do you mm. actually have the ability to say something as a partner because you are in a partnership together it is their body their choice their life but also you're in a partnership so what's that like and so not only was like um, I emotional after that stream I ended up like looking around being like I need to call my therapist again and kick things back off I need to figure this out this you can send the bill to Larian okay <laughs> I will they're in Belgium absolutely yeah. thank you because my insurance does not cover that so <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, uh, one of the things that I find really cool uh, about the endings, spoilers, 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 whatever, uh, is the fact that, you know, by that time you've proven the, that you can influence your partners and they probably influenced you. I mean, it's harder to see because you're playing from your perspective, so who knows what you, if their characters are actually influenced. They are, though, right? You're doing things because, you know, Carlac wants you to if you're being honest. You're doing things because you want to appease Lazelle. You're doing things because Shadow Heart's in a lot of pain, and you just really want to support her in this moment, what, whoever your chosen partner is. And in a way, that's reflected in them too, right? Gail has two options. Uh, Lazelle has a few options. They, they, they shape, they're shaped by you and you're shaped by them, which is really cool because in some cases, you know, you, you play a video game and you, not only do you not have that much agency, but neither does your partner, right? By the end of it, you're locked into one scene, whatever that scene is, and that is the scene that you're going to get, and that is the relationship that you will have for the rest of your existence, theoretically. Uh, unless you all die via Reaper. Mass Effect. <laughs> wow. You just spoil Mass Effect as well? <laughs> you're a monster. <laughs> In any case. <laughs> wow, I mean, you're living up to that name, Werewolf Feels. I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> I'm just really emotional about it. No, but at the end of the day, right, it, it, it says a lot about, you know, a, what it, not only about a character's agency, but that character's ability to choose to listen to you, yeah. to choose to respond yeah. to you. And that's very real, and it's how real relationships work, too. It's really nice to see it done well. I think this is probably the game with the most in-depth relationships mechanic I've ever seen. And uh, unlike some others, I really do enjoy romance in my games. I always engage in it whenever possible. This one, they didn't just feel like people. They felt like humans. Yeah. Even the ones that who aren't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. interesting for me because like in terms of like making choices and doing things. So 
if y'all hate me, I frankly don't care. But in my current <laughs> Dark Urge playthrough, I um I let Shadow Heart and Lizelle fight. I went back to sleep. <laughs> and um, <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of what happened was, well, we're short one gift Yankee. <laughs> oh. I, look, I said, I'm going to let this roll out. I'm going to see what happens because I've always stopped the fight. And I'm like, I'm being a dark urge. I'm gonna be like, you know what? That's not my problem. I'm going to sleep. I ain't. Every time I try to take a nap, somebody comes along. The dream visitor, somebody wants to talk to me. Raphael won't let me sleep. I'm like, y'all figure this shit out. I'm going back to bed. And well, um, yeah, I woke up to murder. <laughs> But I've never seen a game where the characters are just like, we don't like each other and we're going to work, we're going to do something. You do what you want. And that animosity and the other feelings because, you know, Lazelle is fanatic at first for Vlocketh. Same with Shadowheart for Char. And, yep. you know, Astarian wants revenge. He wants his freedom and he's terrified of what could happen if, if Kazador finds him again. You know, Karlak wants her heart back, literally and will do anything not to go back to Zariel. And just all of these characters have had the very essence of their, of their agency stripped away before you meet them. Yeah. And that's part of what has just sucked me into this game so much and why I propose the panel. <laughs> um, any other thoughts before we switch to um, our next slide? All right. Uh, yay, intimacy. And that's my go. current dark urge. <laughs> um, so... You know, we've talked about intimacy, and a lot of people hear intimacy, and they go, ooh, fucking. It's not always about sex. You can have very intimate, very close moments with people that are your friends, your colleagues, your comrades, that have literally nothing to do with physical intimacy. Um, you know, in this moment, my dark urge had just fought off the urge to kill Astarian, the person he loves. And they had a very hard conversation after, your, after that scene. Um, and then, you know, we already talked about it a bit with agency of Karlek asking to be there to the bitter end. So, um, on intimacy, what are thoughts? Does anyone want to go first? Uh, I'm kind of going to echo what these two folks have because I suffer from massive amounts of migraines. Mm -hmm. Really, really bad migraines. And then when I get a really bad one, I cannot be touched by anything. I do that, I flare up, I, sometimes they're screaming. When you fix as much as you can Carlac's heart and you can touch her, I felt that in my very soul. Uh, and yes, it's technically physical, but the truth of the matter is when you, when you suffer from a, a, an affliction that does not allow you to be touched at times, mm -hmm. that's more than just physical. It's, yeah. it's intimacy on a human level that goes back to like generations. It, it's, it's genetic the need, that desire uh, for a trusted person to touch you in the way that you can touch them. Uh, and it was probably one of the most intimate moments I've ever had in a game, sex be damned. <laughs> so, many thoughts? I think that Karlak's first hug was probably the most intimate scene that I did. And it was, you can see it in my body language, that there's that relaxation of breath. There's the, for months I've been like, can't touch, and I want revenge and sex. <laughs> I'm not gonna get any of them. Um, it's interesting you used, you used an example of, of Karlak asking you to be there at the end with her. Um, in a way, she, she sort of comes on really strong, one of the few characters that is actually, no strings attached, and because of her condition, can't get there, is forced into a relationship. She's not used to it. There's a whole thing she talks about when she was younger, she was sort of shagging around the gate, and now she's down for it, she can't, and she's running out of time, and now she is forced to get to know you, and if she does fall in love with you, that will affect the end game. That will affect what she actually wants to do because you're giving her something to live for, and I think that that's an incredible choice. And then you've also got the we've got I have got to do a platonic I love you. I've never even had that in a game. I've never had that as a player. And I remember we got this post Gortash. Um, if you don't have a relationship, she's like um, a stupid fucking bridge. I'm going to go back to camp. Um, love you, mate. 
you know. <laughs> and I said, is that, is that a romantic one? Because you always have to go, romantic approval, not approval. So you just sort of work out exactly where you are so it all made sense when it came together. And, and they were like, no, that's a platonic one. And I went, ooh, that's a special one. <laughs> and it's intimate, it's intimate. Yeah. And uh, yeah, again, just so well thought out. Across all the characters, there's so much depth to these characters. Yep. And it's just the algorithms, I can't get my head around <laughs> to keep tabs on all this, to make it consistent. Yeah. Other thoughts? With intimacy too, obviously, and I agree with our wonderful rest of our panelists, uh, intimacy for me always manifests too in the conversations that are being had. Um, the fact that as we were all traveling, more and more of these stories, the backstories, trauma, the happiness too, like uh, Shadowheart sharing that she likes night orchids and such, those little moments slowly are peppered through the game and you're having very real conversations, whether that be with Gail, for instance, and you are sitting under the stars and you're not romancing him, but you're having a very real conversation of him considering you know, the big decision you have to make in act two, uh, you know, whether to sacrifice himself or not when you're getting to that moment and uh, whether you choose to support him in his decision and, and, and try and make good with Mistra or to deter him and his kind of like response of saying, well, damn you for making me actually care about everything. And it's, again, I, I just love how none of these conversations felt really forced. If anything, I always felt very unprepared or surprised by some of the conversations, by seeing that, hey, I'm coming back to camp and Lazelle has an exclamation over her head and she's going back and forth about Blacketh and what's gonna happen and she's unsure of next steps. When, you know, at the very start of the game, she's so steadfast about who she is and what she stands for, um, that kind of fluttering. And that happens with basically all of the characters at certain points. Even Halson, who in Act One is built to basically be, yes, our lovely, amazing Mount Halson Bear Man, but also we see in Act Two with everything happening with the Shadow Curse, there's a lot of sensitivity and fear that he has about not being able to lift it. And so having those very deep, in-depth conversations uh, has just been absolutely fascinating and felt so genuine uh, that it actually made a lot of the characters, even some of the characters that I don't necessarily vibe with the most, uh, more interesting and I wanted to know more about and explore those relationships differently because of that. Yeah, I think, um while our romantic choice while streaming was Carlac, I also explored a lot of the just like platonic, almost semi-romantic, but not relationship with Astarian. And one moment that really stuck with me that sort of made me see him in a different light was, um, I believe it's act two, there's somebody that wants to be fed on by him. Um, mm -hmm. And originally I was like, nope, Astarian said no, we're good to go, that's it, bye. And then uh, someone in my chat said, you're actually missing out on a pretty huge stat boost. I was like, really? And they were like, yeah, it's plus one strength to any character if it's starting to sort of like bites the person and takes one for the team. And I was like, okay, well, mm, let's reload and see what that looks like. And so I did, and that was such a huge trigger for Astarian. First of all, blowing past that, no thanks, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. And second of all, you know, at first I thought it was just like a little bit of a wink and a smile of like, oh, vampirism is a little bit sexual, mm. but then it you know, comes to find out that was his life. He was basically made to have sexual relations with people that he was not interested in through biting and through being a vampire and through being fetishized and all these different things. And it bubbled all of these things to the surface. And I felt terrible. I felt sad for this person. And it was just, it was wild seeing what was intimacy for him mm -hmm. and how that compared to an actual honest friendship or relationship in game. Um, because we all sort of get to define that for ourselves and I thought Astarians was a fascinating version of like, yeah, it's not even sex for him necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just a really special thing to explore that impacted me quite a bit. All right. Uh, funny you bring up Astarian and intimacy. Uh, <laughs> shout out to our friend. No one's done that before. Nope. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, you know, to be a little bit serious, our, uh, a friend of ours read Assassin, drew this great comic, and it really struck me. 
because the comic is talking about that very thing of at your own pace. Because one of the things that struck me with the star and, and you know all the different ways that you can romance him or interact with him, and that moment with Vajra, yeah. when she's creepy like, and it's like, okay, look, lady, I don't know what you think you're going to do with with becoming a vampire. You already got the red eyes. You should be satisfied. <laughs> but this comic just really struck me because you know everyone in the game seems to be beholden to something else. You know, Karlek is was beholden to Zariel until she escapes the hells. You know, Gale to Mistra until he his hubris undid him almost literally. Um, everyone else, you know, and and Lazel to Blacketh, Shadowheart to Shar, etc. And so I just I put this in as you know not a ooh let's specialize on a starian, but a lot of the characters have these moments where they're all of these things intertwine where their lack of agency may keep them from knowing what love is, really. Yeah. That lack of agency means they may not know what intimacy is outside of sex. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought this was kind of a good bow on our conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's just another fun panel. <laughs> but, it, but it's a good thing because it's like, like, even though there's like a touch on the neck, it's very clear like, hey, if you say no, deuces, I'm out. I will let you up, do whatever. And so that's what I love about Red's comics when they do focus on their dark urge and a starian. I will look like a starian and I will come off the stage if you do not have an actual question. <laughs> like, you all laugh. Mm. I may be short. I've seen you hurt people. What? I've seen you hurt people. That's oh, yeah. Uh, I'm short, I but help I will. Her. <laughs> what? I'll help you. <laughs> I mean, between the two of us and some friends in the audience, I don't think you want to do that. So um, I'll cheer I'm not. You on. Sh what? I'll cheer you on. Like, go get him! Like, I, don't know. Uh, I believe there is a mic somewhere. I can't tell because our lights right in my face. All right, we are going to walk a mic around. So you're brave. It, oh, <laughs> oh. You're gonna come. Oh, to they him. have to come to you. So please go you line up, up in front of our enforcer. Have a question. <laughs> Have a relevant question. If you ask a fanfic, fandom, or other We're question, gonna go I'm going you. to tell you to sit down. <laughs> and also... Please ask whatever Mass Effect questions you would like. Yes, no. <laughs> oh, do ask us about Mass Effect, please. Uh, <laughs> but please do be concise, because there are many other people who'd like to ask a question, too. And we have 12 minutes, and the timer's counting down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Hi, um, what uh, non-playable characters or companions, um, or basically what side characters would you wish were romanceable? Uh, Alfera. Yeah, she's, yes, she's right there on the front row. <laughs> yeah. right. This is not church, this is not call and response. <laughs> Anyone else have a quick answer? No, Alfera's pretty solid, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah. the whole panel. No, Lily Alfera. Okay. All right. I think Roll we're all in agreement here. All right, Alfera gets the really, No Withers fans here. I'm gonna get <laughs> One of my, I will say this. One of my players really wants to, and it is our wonderful, wonderful T-Turpy Games that wants to. Oh, God you. bless You know what? Robo needs Jesus and everything yeah. else. So. <laughs> and Lathander. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is kind of a Carlac question. So we all know that Carlac's romanceable and stuff. But I got to know, like on a scale of 1 to 10, how much would it hurt to uh, have sex with Carlac? Carlac doesn't know the answer. You know the answer to that, sir. <laughs> you naughty boy. You can get aloe at CBS. <laughs> well, how Everything's a fetish. <laughs> Concisely. All right, okay, so my question is, um, I, I think a lot about uh, player consent and character consent in games, and I do a lot of writing about it. Um, one thing that stumped me on how I felt about it. Uh, All right, I'm going to ask you for your question. Yeah, uh, it is that, how do you feel about Harlep and how it was handled that your only choices are sex with Harlep or kill Harlep? Uh, for those who uh, don't necessarily know, Harlep is the, uh, the incubus yes. uh, that you meet in the Den of Raphael. Uh, it's definitely one of those places where I wish there was just a bit more fleshing out 
I'll be honest. But it also kind of makes sense considering Harlep's intentions because yes. the, the choice here is to kill him or to be used, right? So in a way, Harlep is like, I'm an actual villain and I'm going to hurt you. You get the choice in how to respond. You're gonna let me hurt you or are you gonna try and fight back? It, it does make sense considering who Harlep yeah. is to me. I actually didn't know you could kill Harlep. I've always banged him. <laughs> <laughs> but I would feel weird because Harlep's just there hanging out at Raphael's bequest. And it's like, why we got to fight? But it's also the weird, you're walking down the street and feel a shiver if you agree <laughs> to Harlep. And I'm like, oh boy, I, I didn't read the terms and conditions of that contract. No, did I? <laughs> I would feel weird killing Harlep. All right. Got you. <laughs> Yes. Um, it's okay. Um, I'm gonna say. Oh. Um, so my question is mainly based around uh, Carlac. I know that the queer community as a whole has kind of like really accepted her and, and taken her in and kind of made her like a lesbian icon. What are your thoughts on the sexuality of the characters despite that they can and will bang literally anyone? So she's written as Pan. She talks about having sex with everybody at any point. She's just very upset. She can't do it right now. Um, if, if your experience is that she's lesbian, then she's lesbian. And who has the right to take that away from you? What I don't like is when people start to tell other people they're playing the game wrong or they're interpreting it in an incorrect way. Yeah. But our characters are written as pan. It's as simple as. Yeah, yeah question, because intimacy was brought up. Uh, when Carlac went, I'm so I sorry, everyone. Found Car <laughs> so well, no, I you love Carlac questions. Found Carlac's parents' graves. Yeah. It just, I stumbled upon it. Um, for me, it was intimate because I lost my mom 13 years ago, and I don't have any more family. Mm -hmm. And it really hit. Did have any of you had a moment in the game where it, it wasn't that closeness? It was. A, just that platonic, like, I feel too. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind if I answer this? Please do. You're the players. <laughs> um, I had that same moment because I lost my mom four years ago. And sorry, I'm trying not to cry. Um, <laughs> those moments when you realize that Carlac actually had parents that loved her. And it's so fucking unfair what's happened to her. Um, actually, my reaction to the scene with Gortash is how I started interacting with Sam and got to know them. And so those moments where you realize you don't have anyone in your life who loved you that much. In the case of many of the other characters, you know, there's Shadow Heart and you find her parents. Yeah. And you have to make a really hard decision of, yeah, that one do you kill her parents or do you not? And I don't know what happens if she stays with Char because I've only done that once and I haven't found her parents yet. But the fact that your character, or if you're playing as Shadowheart, playing as Carlac, also I found out that Carlac has a surname that way because I didn't know. Um, but it's just, there are things that just are emotional gut punches in the game and it's what's made me love it so much even if times I have to like, be glad I don't stream with a camera on because I'd be a sobbing mess. So I got you, I understand. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. That's yeah. Thank you, Tanya. Hi. So my girlfriend's mute and lives miles away from me. Uh, and our, the way we have intimacy in anything is it's so very difficult. And we bonded over Baldur's Gate 3 because there were so many characters she could choose from. But there was never one that she really felt that represented the mute status for her, right? Besides Carlac, mainly because of how she's not allowed, you're not allowed to touch her for the first like half of, of uh, Act One. But those scenes when you do with you know like the, the the game that you can choose the love or whatever. My main question is, 
how do you represent a character like that, even though, yeah, you're Pan, like the character is mm -hmm. defined as that, but how do you represent other people who, you know, can't speak in that way? I mean, to be honest with you, it wasn't in the script I received. I mean, what's astonished me about the reception this game has, has had, particularly with Karlak, is how many different kinds of people have found healing and found seen themselves, and they even found stuff out about themselves, too. Um, I don't know, I suppose I'll have to ask her about how she feels about that. Um, that's, totally, that's a totally acceptable answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, I was wondering, like, generation to generation, games evolve, be it graphics or whatever, mechanics-wise, and romance being one of them, and it's clearly that Baldur's Gate has evolved to, uh, beyond the previous generation of games. Do you see anything in the future generations, like, from this experience, is there anything else you see, like, further exploration needs to be still made, any aspects in your playthroughs you're like, I wish there was a little more here that I can explore in terms of romance or intimacy or sex? It's never enough, is it? <laughs> it's never enough. <laughs> um, I wish I got more than a one, one time only deal with Missouri because I said no and regretted it. But then I did it with Gail mm. and I was like, huh, okay, cool. I, I think now I have successfully slept with everyone in the game. <laughs> uh, Congratulations. I, I'd want, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I'd want the ability to have uh, more platonic intimate moments with characters who are not necessarily part of your party. Uh, in fact, as I like, the depth of these characters mm -hmm. is very good, but there are other characters that are not so deep that I would like to have more depth. And Alfira is one of them, but there are plenty of others as well. Uh, and I'd like the chance to to see more writing because the writing is so good. All I want is more. Yeah. I also wish we got more time with with Halson and also to romance Jahira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, being older myself, it's so nice to have Jahira. And that is a personal bug, but Halson is older than Jahira. And all I right. read is like, oh, she's old. She's like 120. Halson's a billion years old. And you want to <laughs> wanna climb that oak, Daddy, don't you? You know, it's, it's embarrassing. Poor Jahira. There's a bit of an age gap. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think this just also set a bar for, like, the type of romance we see in games. You know, games are going to have different budgets. Games are going to have different timelines, um, different audiences. But at the very least, I think this is very much set a new standard for the types of intimacy you can see in games. And this is maybe going to sort of scooch in a new paradigm for that, where it's not just like, oh, there's a bunch of cishet options, and then actually there's one character who's bi. It's like, <laughs> no, there's a whole spectrum of love and what that means to you, and maybe we can even see that in smaller indie games as well. That's my hope. Mm. Thank you. We have, a min we have two minutes. So I want to make sure we get this last question. Hey, so I'm a safe scummer. I like Get out. Exploring. <laughs> get out. <laughs> get them. Get them. Uh, <laughs> Please stay. I mean, I like exploring the entire story and all of the options, obviously. But I'm interested <laughs> in, you know, with talking about int intimacy and, like, choices. Um, do you think the way that people play the game kind of affects um, how we perceive intimacy within the game? Just because when I play it, I see every single option. And I'm interested in thinking, in asking, do you think it's a better, um, sorry, a better way to just play it all the way through as far as getting the intimate moments and hitting those points? Or do you think it is better to see every option? And um, sorry, I'm not 100% sure if I'm uh, so you're asking basically, is it better to to kind of experience everything and see all the options or, or? choices? Like mm. as far as that's such a subjective question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is subjective. But what I will say is like the idea of there being so many different options and you not knowing where that leads. I think that kind of mirrors life because yeah. mm -hmm. you're not supposed to date someone to say the right thing, to become the mm -hmm. right answer for them. You're supposed to be like, here's me, that's you, does this work? So yeah. I would argue that it's a very fun and interesting way to play, to be like, I'm going to answer how I would honestly yeah. and just see how that goes. But otherwise, there's no wrong way to play it, you know? I, I would agree with that. Um, so currently, I'm doing an honor mode run, and we just hit Act 3. Um, and I am also, I have been a safe scrummer, but act 
uh, honor mode has forced me uh, to not be able to do that at all. Uh, for those of you that don't know, honor mode is really the hardest mode of the game. If your, your tab can die, but if it's a TPK, game over, you gotta start over or you can continue in another mode. Um, so, hi, yeah, uh, there are decisions you may or may not be able to make depending on if you make a whiz save or not, um, and you have to stand by those decisions and seeing that, and it's been really interesting to see how that goes. Uh, we are unfortunately at time, but we got through the whole queue. Congratulations. And no one died. Sorry, Tanya. What? No one died. Sorry, Tanya. <laughs> Next time. Damn it. <laughs> I mean, I had to be able to come back to Boston. But please do your panel <laughs> survey, not just for tonight, but for anything else you go to tomorrow. Telling hacks that you like this kind of content helps us submit these things and get seen again. Uh, the QR code is around. If you don't want to get off the screen, it's in the app. Uh, very quick outros, and then we're leaving. It is late. Uh, I'm going to start with Sam. Hi, I'm Samantha Bell. I play a character called Carlac in a, a, a dating sim called... Bo anyway, I'm, I'm Samantha Bell on, on Twitter and Twitch and YouTube, essentially. Yeah. Camilla Panda on all platforms, but you can find me live on Twitch playing. If it's not Skull and Bones, I will finally start my Dark Urge run, I swear. Uh, Nudin Likadir, also known as At Werewolf Feels, and uh, I'm on a podcast called The Atomless, if you want to check that out, Starfinder. I'm leaving the cards there. Just have fun with them. We're clearing the <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, D&D Jordan Lee, she, her, they. Uh, you can find me all across the uh, internets at uh, D&D Jordan Lee. Uh, I'm Damian Haas. All internet stuff is just my name, uh, he, him pronouns. Uh, come to my signing tomorrow, 1 p.m. back at the Expo Hall, or just say hi. The line got capped off last time, so come early if you feel like it. Um, thank you very much. And I've been your moderator and chaos demon for this panel. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Sam, for agreeing to join. Thank you, everyone, for agreeing to join and talk about, you know, let's be a little dirty. Let's have a serious conversation. Uh, we are clearing the theater. Y'all have a good night. Enjoy your packs. Yeah.